Yo, what's good everyone? Welcome back to another video. This is essentially episode three of 100 tips and tricks to master Fortnite in one video. These are gonna be 100 of the best tips and tricks that I can come up with to help a mix of all players. Whether you are fairly new to Fortnite or have been playing for a long time, there's gotta be at least a few tips in here that you haven't heard before, or maybe even tips that you forgot about. There's not even one video like this for the new season on all of YouTube, and today, we're gonna change that. If I miss anything in this video, leave a comment down below for others to see. Share your tips down below, and let's get to work. Work. This video is sponsored by my creator code, Ken Beans. If you end up liking this series, the best way to support me is use my supporter creator code, Ken Beans, in the item shop. We currently have 423 people using my code, and I can't thank you guys enough. If we could magically hit 1,000 people using code Ken Beans this month, it would actually mean the world to me, especially knowing a few months ago we had less than 10 supporters. So for a small celebration, if you want to enter the V-Bug giveaway I'm doing, just click the first link in the description and enjoy the video. Tip number one, your goal for Fortnite is to learn to properly use cones if you don't know already. Pros are always abusing this meta because they allow you to peace control other players and turn yourself into the aggressor. In season six, there are three types of guns, primal, makeshift, and the normal type that we've seen in the past. Every time you go up to an NPC, they always give you something just for interacting with them. I've gotten a plethora of all types of heals, mats, mechanical parts, and bones as well. Even if you're in a rush, just click on them once and leave. Make sure you know exactly what type of upgrade you want. If you upgrade a makeshift to a primal or a makeshift to a mechanical, then there's no going back. You're not able to switch later on. So just be sure about what you want. My friends and I noticed that they changed around an old setting that a lot of people we're used to. You can now move in any direction while you're in your inventory. So if you use the normal inventory bind in the settings, consider changing to cursor mode instead so that all you have to do is let go of the key bind and the inventory will automatically disappear on your screen. I personally like this way more than the other inventory bind. These new primal shotties are insane. If you're a controller player, this is going to be your new best friend. Land at the spire, kill the crazy looking NPC there, and you can get the spiral assassin's primal shot. It's pretty much like a mythic shotty and it's absolutely nuts. We might see a nerf to this soon, but use it before it's passed. The makeshift ARs have a lower fire rate and less ammo in the clip. Do your best to always try and upgrade right away. If you ever find yourself with one of the new bows this season, like the one that shoots fires, stinks, grenades, or shockwaves, make sure it's fully charged before you release it, otherwise it just doesn't work. When it's not fully charged, it just shoots a normal bow. Whenever you're box fighting someone, you always need to make sure that your crosshair is lined up right on them the whole time. This tip is something people forget when they're the aggressor in the fight. Use the cuttlefish in fights for a free kill. Even if the other player is turbo building, the explosion can still go through. The longer you take to set this up, the more time you give the enemy to figure out what you're doing, so just be careful. Build out a hard mat in fights. You could use your wood to ramp at someone or to use to protect yourself when you rotate, but when you box fight, hard mats is the wave. Every pro does this in serious games. Shout out to Raider464 for these insane edit and peace control maps. This is what me and a lot of pros use to really hone in on our own mechanics. You can get a lot of solid practice in that transfers over to real games almost instantly. And all you gotta do is just run through the edit course like it's a real person. Get used to having your shotgun out more than usual in box fights. I always see lots of pros shooting at the walls with their shot then taking out their pickaxe next to try and go for a quick wall replace. Or they even just use their shoddy to use it as like a battering ram to break through a wall that's really weak. This is good practice because your shotgun's always out. If you ever have an enemy on the run, you could just quickly shoot through the wall instead of taking out your pickaxe, because that takes longer. Use this building strat the next time you go to a build fight. This is what I do to fake someone out to thinking I'm going one direction, but I'm really going the other, and I can grab height really fast. This is something that requires so little mats, and it's so useful to get high ground. If you're terrified of arena, but you want to get points, you can land at places like Colossal Crops, and you could just buy a prop to disguise to just hide in arena and get points. There's other NPCs that offer these disguises, but this is the one I know of. You gotta be down real bad to use this in champs, but I'ma leave this up to you. After you take someone's wall, the meta is to still put cones in people's boxes. The general rule of thumb is to put a stair in someone's box when you take them by surprise. If they're looking right at you, put a cone so you don't have to do extra edits to shoot them. The less edits, the more optimal. It's all about simplicity. If you struggle doing any sort of edit, try to spend the longest amount of time on the ramp by going in this curved type of direction. If you're on a floor, just do the same motion because it allows you to get more time to select the tiles you want. Eventually, after you start building up the mechanics, you can pick up the speed faster and faster, and you don't need to curve that much on the ramp or the floor. Doing this just makes you more consistent in real games. Guarantee you that some of you still don't know the correct way to box up. It goes wall, floor, cone, then finish with placing the walls around you. If you want a cone in your box when you do it, then it goes wall, floor, then wrap around with the walls, and finish with the cones up and down. The reason for the floor first is so you don't place builds above you. No matter what edit you try to do, always select the corners of the tiles because you're faster, and always try to finish head level so you don't have to readjust your crosshair once you confirm it. If you're looking to win a lot of games, the goal is to try and upgrade your guns as fast as possible in season six. That should be your first priority. Farm chickens and other animals for bones and farm cars and other metal objects like red toolboxes in garages for a chance at getting mechanical parts. Just a heads up, most NPCs allow you to buy these materials from them. If you get lucky enough, a normal car can give you around five mechanical parts. Upgrading from NPCs is not removed from the game. There are still some NPCs that spawn that allow you to upgrade your guns with gold. Some people think that the inventory is the only place 
use the upgrade, which is wrong. Warning, this tip is a little risky, but it works a lot. Try to pay attention to where the enemy player is pickaxing your wall so you can edit those tiles to catch them off guard. For some reason, players feel so awkward when they swing at nothing, so that's the best time to shoot them back. You just gotta be quick with it, otherwise it ain't gonna work. I've been learning this semi-old way of healing while someone's pressuring you. Make sure you're building out a hard mat and you just want to full tarp completely away with stairs in your box. Your goal is to put as many builds between you and the enemy as possible so that you get them lost. Pop one mini and then maybe edit your way back to pop one more and boom, now you're half healed up and ready to 1v1 someone again. A little easier said than done, but with some practice, you're gonna master this. If you're on controller, you need to make sure you put your shotgun in your first slot. Low key, only boomers put it in their second slot because more than likely they're just a little too lazy to switch. This is so you're only one click away from your shotgun when you have your pickaxe out. Really quickly, here are some of the best ways to go for protective peak shots to win in any fight. These are the most popular and well-known ones in the community. The first one is a peanut butter edit. All this is just editing the top three tiles and then jumping for a right hand peak. Sometimes you don't even need to jump and you could just do it while you're on your feet. If you do jump, you kind of want to get momentum going to the left so they have less of a chance to see your head. The next one is this top row wall edit. From the enemy's perspective, they're going to have no idea where you're going to jump up from and then once you shoot, you just quickly reset as you're in the air. The third one is just a normal window edit but making sure you confirm it when you're completely behind cover. This edit has been around for a while and still to this day, people die from editing too early. Just be patient with it. If you ever find yourself weak in a build fight with heals, lower your ego and go heal up before you try to fight someone. Even though the other person's one shot, it's not worth the risk. If you really want to get cracked, start watching pros play on Twitch to learn new things. Then try your best to implement those strategies into your own game when you hop on. <coughs> Cam means on Twitch. <clears throat> Speaking of which, I need a trio. So if you guys know anyone I should link up with, leave their name down below in the comment section. There's box fights, zone wars, scrims, and arena to get better at the game. If you're looking to go from noob to pro, I would follow this order. Practice your mechanics and creative till you feel like you can completely remember all your binds without looking at them. Then grind arena and study how you die each time. Whenever you see a weakness, that should be the first thing you work on the next day when you hop on for like 20 minutes. Rinse and repeat, and you're gonna find the game getting a lot easier. 90% of the time should be you spent grinding arena, but then you just use the scrims in between that to learn the competitive side of Fortnite. Speaking of, so many discords host scrims. I'll leave a link to the scrim discord you can join to practice those too. While you're down there, you might as well join mine. <clears throat> You should be going out of your way to learn high walls in real fights. Whenever you side jump, take it as a habit to place high walls so you always practice doing it. Doing this will further your peace control knowledge and end the fight way faster. Trust me on that. Low key, I think Fortnite is a semi pay to win game. You want to use the gliders with the surfing animation so it's harder to see your head when you're in the air. Also, the girl skins are skinny and curvy so they might be harder to hit. Most of the guy skins are bulky, but not all of them. Realistically, you could be what you want, but that's just my personal opinion. The goal is to never take damage in fights. Unless you're storm fighting with no heal, play patiently and calm in your fight. If you still get nervous, just remember the more experience you get, the easier it's gonna become, so keep grinding. Be careful about breaking every car in sight for these mechanical parts. Make sure you pay attention to the zone because you could quite literally be griefing your game if you destroy all the rotates. For anyone who still doesn't know, you can craft the meat you get from animals into a cloak so that when you run around wolves and stuff, they don't try and eat you. It takes two bones and one meat to craft a hunter's cloak and it also takes up an inventory slot, so keep that in mind. If you're ever on height with no mats, don't forget that you can still land in things like bushes, dumpsters, and haystacks and not take any fall damage. So just keep an eye out. If you live under a rock, Fortnite added performance mode that you could switch to to get more frames on PC. The meshes on high give you bubble wrap builds and the meshes on low give you straight mobile builds. If you ever want to stop getting triggered when you die, take a hard breath in and leave the game as fast as possible without saying anything. Then breathe out and queue into the next game. I do a bunch of things along with this, but this is the main one I do so that I don't shove an elbow in my monitor. Never get triggered again by pre-editing a build when you're trying to do multiple edits back to back to back. Turn on disable pre-edit option instead. If you don't have this on by now, you're welcome. Master this retake and your life will be so much easier in 1v1 build battles. This is what Face Way does, so he's way harder to track and get the jump on the person he's versing. Edit out wall, stare, and then two high walls. I use this in real games and in creative. It works every time. Constantly dying in box fights? Go out of your way to learn how to peace control behind a window edit. I promise you this is the best way to keep enemies at distance while you box them like a fish and then hit them with a right hand peek. The first person to master this is gonna be way ahead of the meta. Stop taking 50-50s unless you have no match. If you end up mongrel classicking someone, make sure you reset your wall after you complete the stare at it so that you can reset for a right hand peek. This is just one example, but for real, 50 50s just ain't it anymore. If you end up being in a 50 50, learn the proper way to strafe. You get up close and personal to the player and crouch spam at their right side. That's your left. Lots of people get this mixed up, but because you watched this video, now you know. Something I see so many people do is pickaxe the floor, place a cone, then edit the cone and pickaxe the floor to try and grab it. This is something I started doing as well because if you're able to get the wall on the first swing, 
of a pickaxe, you're gonna have that guy or girl taken so off guard. I learned this by watching my man Jive in TV. He's a goat. If you ever find yourself in a position where you and an enemy are gonna meet with a one space in the middle, always place a cone to get the drop on. This move is used so, so, so much and it works in arena fights. It stops them from being able to place a stair and allows you to end the fight real quick. Rotate the zones early as there are no more bouncers or launch pads. Besides cars to rotate, you can use chickens or you can fish to find spicy fish, which is like a pepper, or you can fish to find hot floppers instead. And those just give you a boost when you're jumping to rotate faster as well. Almost never do you want to double swing your pickaxe in arena during a box fight. Swing once, take out your shotgun to test the waters, then try again. Aimlessly pickaxing a wall is a recipe for disaster. In Colossal Crops, destroy anything with a skull, like some fences, because it gives you a lot of bones, which you can use to upgrade with. The people that complain about low damage pump shots are usually the ones that never aim for the head. Lower your targeting sensitivity so that you move slower while aim down to line up the headshots easier in fights. Spend a tad more time aiming at the head before you shoot. Don't be trigger happy because it can cost you. When zone is extremely far, don't forget about climbing to the top of these mountain things from the zero point. You can jump on these things like a mini launch pad. Even better, if you do the same thing while holding the chicken, you go so far. Tip 50 is to scroll down the page and drop a fat like for the one time. Thank you. This is the fastest way to destroy all the slurp trucks. If you just get in the truck and drive it backwards, it instantly breaks the slurp truck and you can free rotate faster than you normally would. Learn every exploit you know to get inside someone's box. This is yet again another way of ending fights super early. The main one that everyone uses in the community is just putting a stair above your head, then swing your pickaxe at the same time you jump, and then usually you follow this up with a cone in their box and then go crazy and try and kill them. Speaking of which, your pickaxe does 75 damage to walls. So when you're box fighting, just keep that in mind because you might be able to get it with one swing. If you ever play any sort of team mode, you could throw your teammates down body off any height and they won't take fall damage. This has saved my teammates and I multiple times. Keep in mind there are multiple NPCs you can buy a riff from. This could save you if a zone is really far or you need to run away from another person. Only downside is that it costs 245 gold, so it might not be used too often. Whenever you get lobby focused, instantly switch to hard mats. The better option is to just look for natural cover though. When you place wood, it starts with 90 health. Brick starts with 99 health and metal starts with 110 health. In season six of chapter two, the gold pump is the only one that can 200 pump you. It does 203 damage to the head. Also remember that the purple does a max of 189. The normal blue pump can only do 100 body and has a 1.75 multiplier. That's a max damage of 175 for the blue. All spawn, the most important things are shields, height, and to stop looting with your head down all the time. As you land and as you loot, you want to rotate out first so you can get the jump on your opponent and not the other way around. At the junkyard next to dirty docks, place a floor in the ground under the compact cars to destroy them. This gives you around 15 mechanical parts in a very, very short amount of time. Then you can walk out that place styling on all the kids early game with a purple pump. The primal ARs are the best ones if you use them correctly. Try to be a little more sneaky so you can get closer to your enemies to get beams since there's no more first shot accuracy in these weapons. When the primal ARs are hitting, they are hit. Work on controlling your nerves. Having confidence in yourself always helps you win more fights no matter what game mode you're in. If you think you're bad, you're gonna perform bad. Make sure you're always box fighting with a cone in your box. If you're real fancy, you could do the tip I learned from FaZe Martas, where you let them take your floor and you phase through a stair to shoot them. Once you shoot, you just run under your stair and you're protected. The chug cannon is still in the game this season. All you need to do is go to Slurpee and buy it for 600 gold. It's kinda a lot, but do remember that the challenges that the NPCs boost your gold at the start. It's got five shells and it gives you 15 HP or shield. It also recharges. You get parts based on the amount of hits you do to cars. Some pros are starting to shoot the cars with their guns with a chance to get more mechanical parts. If you use an AR, you do 30 damage to the car, and if you use your pickaxe, you do 40. If you're really down bad for parts, you could shoot the cars instead. If you struggle doing any type of edits, turn off sprint by default and practice doing the edits just by walking so you can get the movement down before you pick up the speed. This could be a game changer getting over that initial hump. Lots of things are added into the game that cause builds to be set on fire. Next time you're in a situation like this, build out a brick or metal because it can't catch on fire. This is one of the most talked about peace controlling methods that not a lot of players try to implement into their game. If the enemy doesn't have a stair or a cone in their box, just walk up to the wall, crouch and look to the left while holding turbo build. You could try spamming it as well if you don't get it the first try, but you can get a stair or a cone right through the other player's wall. After that, try and predict where they're gonna go so you can get some free peace control and get some hits. Carrying a bow in this meta seems to be the new wave. Especially since you don't have first shot accuracy, it might give you the extra pressure needed to be the aggressor in the fight. All I'm saying is that it might be a good thing to get used to how they work. You can predict pretty easily in box fights. Next time you pressure someone's wall, look to see when they take out their builds because that gives you a prime time signal that they're about to do something. Whenever you drop down on someone's box, stay away from being directly in the center. The better option is to land on the left side of the box and pickaxe from there. If they edit out, just quickly place a wall and get back to hack. This is a really safe way to not get boxed as you go for walls. If you're semi new, you could reach builds that are further than one tile away with your map out instead of a gun or a pickaxe out. This is how people like clicks can peace control kids while being really far away. Whenever you use the makeshift shoddy, constantly remind yourself to reload. Even though it does shoot a little faster, it only holds two bullets, so you're putting a 
lot of pressure on yourself if you run into a box with only one bullet in the clip. For those who constantly play cash cups, remember that those tournaments are a game of patience. Yes, you do need to be a good fighter, but I watch so many people just think they can key everything, and because they die early, they think that they aren't in the race anymore. Play patient and smarter rather than anxious, and you might see some improvement. People don't want to hear you complaining at any age. If you're looking to find a good duo or trio, that's the first step. I'd rather have someone with an amazing outlook on the game whose mechanics aren't as great rather than a cracked person who never stops whining. It brings down the vibes a lot when you play. Are you the type of person who practices realistics, box fights, and creative maps all day but just can't do well in real games? Try 1v1ing new people. If something doesn't work for you, change up the way you practice. Go to the Looking for Players channel in almost any Discord server and make friends with the people who beat you. That way you can keep playing them and get better. You should be looking to make walls weak before you jump on a player's box. If you could start taking the wall before your feet touch the ground, you're gonna have a way better chance to take it. This is a strat that I see Benji Fishy and Savage do all the time. The most basic tip you can give to anyone, the second you get a kill, you should take out your pickaxe right away and spam your interact button as you run over the loot. As long as you have your pickaxe out and you don't have auto pickup on, you can then assure yourself that you're gonna be snagging all the loot that drops. In pressure situations, this is a must because sometimes you really need that refresh and you might not have the time to run over the loot. So make sure you spam with your pickaxe. If you ever get someone half piece controlled, you need to not get too greedy with trying to finish the kill fast because they still have a chance of running away. What I see pros doing nowadays is landing one big shot, then predicting where the enemy might run to to complete the kill. There's not a lot of situations where you can do this, but as you watch YouTube videos and live streams, you're gonna be able to learn how it's done. That way you at least know it's a thing. Whenever you get completely full box with a cone and surrounding walls, most people think that they have no cover, so they just full send out the guy who boxed them. A technique that so many people don't talk about is hiding behind cones and use that as cover to hit crouch peak shots. This works so much better than just charging at them. This is a very common position that lots of people find themselves in. Instead of opening the whole wall up like this and bulldozing in, a better idea would be using this top row wall edit as a way to take crouch peak shots. Or you could do a peanut butter edit and reset after you shoot. Regardless of what edit you make or what you try to do in a box fight, don't put yourself in a position where you give the other opponent right hand peaks. You want to know one of the things that makes a pro a pro? The fact of how whenever you verse one, it seems like they attack you from all over the place. And then even worse, when you build fight them, they got all the angles on you. This is because they never stop moving. The less you move, the easier it is for someone to figure out where you are. The meta is changing a lot compared to the older seasons of Fortnite because more and more people are picking up on this. That's why some of these fights take years to finish. They never stop moving. Everyone seems to think they're the new peace control cod. You should start jumping onto the stairs you place in front of people's boxes because this is a great way to see how other players react. Quick knowledge like that lets you know how aggressive you should be in the fight. Just make sure as you jump that you land closer to the top so that even if they do place the cone, you can phase right through it and you make them look silly. This is another really safe way to pressure walls. Place a stair and a floor, but edit the two front tiles of the floor so that you can jump and shoot to pressure the wall. This is one of my personal favorites to keep the pressure up. Speaking of pressure, this is most likely the reason why most of you are dying. You need to work on using all the ammo you got. The second you see a player, you should constantly be spraying from a tile or two away to keep the pressure up. Even though you may not hit them, I can promise you that you're making their mind race because they're trying to figure out what they could do to stop it. That's a huge psychological tip that so many pros use. Keep your ears open for this one. This is how you use the new shotgun. The primal shotguns are all about getting like a licking distance away from the player and cornering them in the box. Peace control first and then bum rush them. No matter which rarity you have, that's the only way you're going to deal some heavy damage. I'm pretty sure even the green or gray can kill someone in like four shots. If you have a makeshift, you need to constantly reload and give yourself the chance to reload by playing angles all the time. Just be careful about full sending into someone's box when you only have one bullet because if you miss, you're screwed. The makeshift shotties do like no damage from two tiles away. So if someone has one and you don't, you need to play far away. If you have a legit pump, you want to keep your distance. Focus more on your right hand peaks rather than focusing on the peace control. When you got a purple or gold pump, I personally like to sit right behind a right hand peak and only use the SMGs when I absolutely have to. These new shotguns are trash at doing structural damage. Don't expect to use any of these shotties like it's a purple or gold tag. Just realize that the meta has changed. Epic took a lot of steps to assure a complete change in pace of the build and box fight in this season. You just gotta grind it out and get adjusted. The most useful box fighting tip I know is to really analyze when the opponent's resetting edits. The second a wall gets reset, this is the best time to try and take it with a pickaxe or shoot it with your AR. You get the wall, boom, establish peace control. If you can get them to open up an edit and then reset it again, that's the best time to strike to try and claim the wall back. Even if someone takes your wall while you're on defense, if they edit something, you can instantly snag it back with your pickaxe or a shotgun. You can no longer reboot or res someone and go into your inventory at the same time. It stops the whole process. I made this mistake one too many times, and if you don't know, now you know. I'm pretty sure when you shoot the stink bow, it doesn't have the same radius as a normal stink would back in the day. When you use the bow, it's like half the radius of the old stink bombs that some of us are used to. You really gotta make sure you hit the right wall or floor even to get the right angle so that they start taking damage. If you ever not want to be stuck in the shaking animation, here's a little trick. Grab an edit before you shake someone. Once you press the edit key again, it stops the whole animation. This can be used for a 200 IQ play if you play it right. Here's the fastest guide to craft any of the explosives, stink, 
shockwave or fire bows. You need to start with the makeshift bow first. To get the shockwave and explosive bow, you need to craft a mechanical bow. The explosive one requires six grenades and the shockwave bow requires two shockwaves. To get a stink bow or a flame bow, you need to upgrade to a primal bow, then get either a stink fish or kill a frog to get a stink sack. To get the flame, you need fireflies or a gas can. Whenever you box fight someone, you should always build two boxes instead of just one. It allows for better peak shots and gives you a way out if you get peace control. Think of it like big dick energy. Just claim more space if you got the max. If you ever want to get a W here off your box, try letting them come into your box and shoot and back up at the same time. This is something I do so much so I can back them off my box and heal. As long as you're not contained in your own box, then all you need to do is back up and shoot and then build a new wall. It's kind of like playing in reverse. Whenever you play from low ground, you should be more concerned with tracking the opponent instead of using crazy retakes. Build fighting in its simplest form doesn't need a lot of retakes. Tracking will help you more so you know how to counter the opponent. You should really go out of your way to learn how to do all the different types of side jumps in the game. I'm gonna leave a link to my side jumping tutorial below if you want to learn it. Spend 10 to 15 minutes learning different types of tunnels in the game. Drills like that is something that you would transfer into real games which is gonna help you so much more. Make sure you learn optimal crouch peeking. You're not supposed to spam it. Make sure every time is just right so it's smooth and clean. Otherwise you're never gonna hit your shot. If you're starting out on Fortnite or even choke a lot of edits, Remember that Fortnite is all about learning to edit slow before you do them fast. Make sure your edits are tight and neat with the smallest movements possible before you start picking up the speed. If you're a controller player that doesn't have paddles, you should look into how to play claw. I have a bunch of tutorials on my YouTube channel, some of my most viewed videos as well, so you might want to check them out. I'm honestly so shot right now. Tip 100, baby. Don't forget to use code KENBEANS for any cosmetic purchases. I heard from a guy who used my code, he just started qualling in solo cash cups. Coincidence? I think not. I appreciate all the people who bought the battle pass with my code as well. Literally, I love seeing those type of comments. These videos are something that I love to do, so get subscribed if you haven't already because there's going to be vids like this coming often. If you got any specific questions or like to watch Arena, I'm always answering people on my Twitch channel, link below. Shout out to the peeps on the screen using my code in the item shop. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you want to be in the next video, just send me proof on Instagram or Twitter. Don't forget about the V-Bug giveaway, link below as well. I love y'all so much, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or a good night. Deuces, everyone. Peace.